Previously on this channel, I muttered these words. You know what, with this wind farm kind of on my doorstep, with hundreds of kilometers of miles of gravel roads like this, it's kind of making me want to build a gravel bike. I live very close to the largest onshore wind farm in the UK. It's also the second largest in Europe. And as I mentioned, it has hundreds of kilometers of miles of gravel roads. My fitness isn't at its best right now, so getting out doing some cardio this summer sounds nice. And these gravel trails aren't as dangerous as the busy roads around here, so should be ideal. If I do build a gravel bike, I don't want it to be just any old ordinary gravel bike. I want it to be different. I want it to be unique. I'm going to have to have words with the cute thief on that. Well, I did have some words with him, and he had some choice words for me too. But with promises of scritches and treats, he went on an adventure to get me the most unique gravel bike parts he could find. And this is what he got. Treats upon completion of the bike, little dude. So yeah, doesn't get much more unique than a 1994 Cannondale Delta V mountain bike frame. These were handmade in the USA and looked like nothing else out there with their oversized tubes and double welded smooth joins. Cannondale weren't afraid of doing things differently and this frame has a massive 1.5 inch head tube for their own unique suspension fork. It was another 10 years or so before other brands started using oversized head tubes so they were well ahead of the times with this. This model also had a unique design with a two part top tube. I'm not sure on the exact reasons, but I guess it adds more standover and a stiffer front triangle. Zzz. It also had a bizarre looking dropout, which I guess makes for a smaller and stiffer rear triangle, even on the bigger size frames. One cool thing with these dropouts is there might be space to add a disc mount. Being a 90s frame, it's meant for rim brakes, but if I can fit a disc brake, then I'm not limited to 26 inch wheel size. I told the cute thief I wanted to use 650B wheels, so hopefully he's thought this through. I'm actually a big fan of the early Cannondales and really like the look of this frame, so I'm excited to get it built. The only issue is someone has already given it a random paint job, which while I don't hate, has to go as I have a particular colour I want this bike to be. Put your guesses in the comments. Fortunately, this paint seems to come off with relative ease, so Let's dive in and strip off. Now if you're going to pay for a stripper, then it's worth getting a good one. And Starchum Syndrip is by far the best I've used. As always, strippers can do a lot of damage if you're not careful, so always wear protection. I use an old frame box to keep everything contained, and use a container and brush to thickly apply it. The thicker, the better, as you don't want it to dry out. Some paints react faster than others. This frame has many layers and it's not quite penetrating through to them all. I use a wire brush to remove the softened layers and see how much is left. Turns out it did penetrate all the way and even if it's not falling off, after a quick wire brush followed by some wire wooling, the frame ended up looking like this. Completely naked. I could mention something about strippers and nudity here, but this is a family friendly channel. Plus, my mum watches. Hi mum. Now that the paint is off, I have spotted a couple of blemishes, so that's a good enough reason not to leave it raw. I'll fill these and paint it to get it look amazing. Speaking of looking amazing, I can't get enough of these smooth welds. I wish more brands did this. Even all the brake mounts get the smooth treatment too. So that's the frame stripped, but there's still a lot I need to do before I paint it. That includes the fork too. Let's take a look and see what we have. Now this is awesome. I mentioned Cannondale make their own suspension to fit the oversized head tube. Well, this is it a Cannondale Fatty Super DL head shock. Rather than a traditional fork with telescopic legs, Cannondale kept the legs rigid and swapped the moving parts into the head tube, hence the bigger head tube size needed. They did a few different models of these with different spring types and travel, but these are air sprung and have about 80mm travel. They also have a lockout lever at the top which makes it fully rigid. Unlike normal forks with round tubes, 
keep things aligned, this actually used a square slider and roller bearings. A similar system is still used in their lefty forks today. 1580 grams is pretty light, even today. This does have the original paint job, but I want it to match the frame, so it's gotta go. I wonder if that stripper is still hanging around. And that's the last strip of double entendre, I promise. Before I let any harsh chemicals near it, I wrap up its sensitive areas and add grease to an area with an o-ring that was hard to tape. Then it's the same process as the frame. Slap on the paint stripper, adding more when needed until the paint bubbles off or is softened to the point it will come off with some persuasion. After a little work, it's also naked, and just like me in my birthday suit, it looks amazing. This fork is actually a later model, and does come with a disc mount. Which means I don't really need the rim brake mounts. As nice as they are with the same smooth welding, I'm going to hack them off for a cleaner look. Some purists won't like me modifying a retro part, but these aren't exactly rare, and once I'm done with them, they'll look great, I promise. Although, it's times like this I wish I had some more tools, a vice at least. That's the easy part done, now to make it look like the mount was never there. This might take some time. One eternity later. Mount? What mount? There was never a brake mount there, was there? But yeah, not bad, huh? And you know the best part? I get to repeat the whole process for the other one. Yay! Ha, <laughs> well, it saw what I did to the first one and decided to make a run for it. Now I've got a lovely disc only fork and you'd never tell it wasn't always the case, especially once painted. Before I do paint, there's still more work I need to do, mainly figuring out how to fabricate a disc mount for the frame. I've tried some ready made mounts to fit other retro frames and it would work with old IS style calipers, but not with modern post style mounts. So I'll have to make something from scratch. And then I'd need to see if a 650B wheel will fit with these bridges, although I am tempted to remove them as well as the rim brake mounts like the fork. But that will have to wait for part 2. I didn't plan on splitting this video, it's just how it's worked out. There are some other unique parts to be fitted so be sure to catch part 2 when it comes out. But until then, as usual have a fantastic week and I'll catch you next time. See you later.